Yo, what's up ladies and gents, I haven't made a YouTube video in a while and this one is gonna be my opinion, my review of Arena. Um, I've played Arena roughly for um, 60-70 hours I would say, I have 26 hours on this account and like 40-45 on the other one. Um, so there are good things and there are bad things, let's talk about the good things first. First of all, I believe Arena is really fun to play, I think it combines uh, Tarkov, and I know a lot of people hate it, but Call of Duty, as you instantly get into the game and you can fight others, uh, that aspect of Call of Duty. And uh, it's fun, I think it's fun for casual players, it's also fun for hardcore Tarkov player base, as they can practice different guns and practice uh, PvP without losing as much as they lose in Tarkov. And at the same time, Arena feels smoother than Tarkov. The servers are better. I think Nikita mentioned that they run at a higher t crit than Tarkov servers do. And generally, while I played on uh, this build, I didn't really feel any big stutters, any big lag. Once I had a problem with the server, I had 20% packet loss and people were teleporting. But uh, if the server is running uh, fine, I have no issues. Like there is no teleports, there is no big desync. And I'm really enjoying it. Next point is competitive itch. If you like competitive games, if you like CSGO, if you like grinding ranks, uh, this game is for you. There is uh, ratings available which refresh like once um, every 12 hours or so. And yeah, you grind the stats, you can see yourself um, on the top of the best of the best. Another thing which I'm enjoying about Arena is the um, fact that there are different modes. Uh, shootout, 2 versus 2, 3 versus 3, teamfight, uh, also there will be more mods uh, added on and I think uh, it will generally suit the player base. If people don't want to grind it too much, if people don't want to play 5 versus 5 in stacks, they can just do 2 versus 2 or um, do the last hero playing solo. As well as there should be a deathmatch, aka you play as a team versus team or you play against everyone. You die, you wait for a couple of seconds, you respawn again and you go back into the combat. I like the fact that there is a big variety of guns in the presets. However, it is also a bad thing because I believe presets are not balanced whatsoever. Um, yesterday we actually got a patch that balanced some of the presets. Um, I don't know what that is based on, but there's somebody in BSG balancing the presets. But at the same time, <clears throat> some things don't make, uh, don't make much sense. For example, this preset of Agent was balanced yesterday and um, they removed armor. Agent doesn't have any armor anymore, so even though you do get a very decent gun with AP bullets, there is no armor whatsoever. I mean, I don't know, maybe give him a paka or something. So yeah, I have a lot of questions regarding presets. And um, yeah, we're slowly gonna move towards the things which I think should be tweaked or changed. So first of all is presets and uh, ranked matchmaking. Right now you are getting matched by ARP. Uh, the game tries to find you people with a similar ARP and it completely neglects uh, which presets you choose. So in other words, I can level up my presets, I can choose a guy with let's say Alton or something, for example this kid with Alton, I can lower my ARP by losing games and then I will have to face new players that play with this kid, Pega Helmet, short AK with bad bullets, and I will be running Alton, level 5 armor, with a AK with 60 rounders. So that's not really balanced. I think this might be to do with the fact that um, there is two types of um, ranked. Like there is ranked that is made in terms of ARP. And there is also gear score that you can see on all the builds. For example, here it's 139. Here it's 469. And if we move all the way down, it's 628. So maybe in the future you will select presets before you load into the game and it's going to match you by the rank and by the presets. Because at this moment it's really unfair. Whoever is leveling up the fastest has the best kits and whoever is starting to play the game has the starter kits. And uh, it's just unfair. There is nothing you can do. There is nothing you can, you can do against uh, guys with better presets. Another thing which I think needs to be tweaked is the amount of XP that you need to level up. So let's say we level up the scout tree. Right? You play with this preset, then you play with this preset, then you play with this preset, and then you unlock this one. So if I don't like this preset, if I don't like Agent, I cannot play with the runner in order to unlock Sandman. So you have to play with the previous preset to unlock the next one. And there is an insane amount of XP you need to get. So right now I'm running Sandman and I need to unlock the next one and it requires 300,000 XP. <clears throat> and for one win, you get roughly 7,000 XP. So in order to get this preset, I need like, what, 40 wins? 
which takes time. And then the next preset is 750k, which is roughly, what, 110 wins, 120 wins. This is insane. And how much does this kit cost? I have no idea. 1.5 million, so like, what, 200 wins? And I've done a rough calculation yesterday, and if you want to unlock all the presets in the game, so every single tree, every single preset, you need to spend roughly three and a half thousand hours playing Arena. And also, I believe that BSG planned it in such a way that after seasons, after Arena seasons end, all of your presets are gonna reset. So I don't fully understand the system, but if, the, if this is the way it works, if, if it resets, they need to speed up the leveling up by, I don't know, maybe times 5, maybe times 10. Another thing which I would love to mention is that some maps are really unbalanced, they are really um, one-sided. For example, the map uh, Bowl. There is one side that is close to Plan B, and if you, if you go up the tower, you can clearly see whole Site A and whole Site B, while from the opposite tower, you can't see shit. And there is a bunch of small moments like this, um, but I think this, this could be balanced in the future. Um, and I'm also not happy with the way sites are in the game at the moment. I believe sites are really open. For example, if you play Air Pit, there is two sites, one on the left, one on the right, A and B. And let's say you have three members of your team alive and two members of the enemy team alive. And if at least one of the members from the enemy team is in the plane, you cannot capture the objective. The, the, the objective. So if a team of three goes for capturing the objective, and team of the two just sits AFK and like peeks it, team of three is gonna lose majority of the time. And uh, usually that team of two, they don't capture because it's too risky. They will just wait for the Raiders and Raiders are really RNG. They can spawn on one side of the map or on the other. Kill and Tegila might spawn on the other map and wreck the team that is close to them while the other team will be safe. I feel like Raiders are way too RNG for this mode and I would personally love to see BSG try something like Gas. Um, which will work the same as Apex Legends, you know, like the zone moves towards the final target as a circle and if you're outside the circle you get a lot of damage, blah blah blah. I'd love to see something like this implemented, gas that goes towards the plant. Because Raiders, they feel way too RNG, sometimes they shoot through walls, sometimes they push you, sometimes they ignore you. You also get RNG with which side Kila and Tequila getting um, spawned on, because if you get Raiders you can kill them, but if Kila or Tequila pushes you there is nothing you can do. I feel like this is too much RNG for a competitive game and I'd love to see that um, changed. Another thing which feels a bit weird is the grenades on smaller maps like Equator. You spawn in, you chuck the nade, there is like a, I don't know, 20% chance you're gonna nade someone randomly. And this feels really unfair. You spawn in, you leave the spawn, and you can die to a random thing like a nade. I mean, I know that there is like a realistic aspect of Tarkov that if the nade lands to you, you die, but it just feels very unfair dying to something random like a random nade in the air which you can't predict and you can't counter it in any way. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what to do with that aspect, but this also feels a bit uh, yucky. And the last thing I want to mention is FPS. <clears throat> Overall, FPS is not bad, but I think I expected something better. I'm getting roughly the same frames on Arena as I'm getting on Customs, and I feel like for people with um, medium and medium to high PCs, this will be a massive point because they will play Arena in 80 to 90 FPS. Unless you have a beast of a PC, you will be playing under 100 FPS in a competitive game. And something needs to be done about it. I was honestly expecting a bit more FPS. Like, when I play laps, I average roughly 250 to 400 frames. And if I play in laps tunnels, I get like 350 frames. I was expecting something about this on Arena, but it's a bit lower. I'm running roughly at like 150 FPS. Uh, so that's yeah, that's the point I want to mention. I love to see I love to see people getting more frames. Otherwise, it's it's I mean, bro, I don't know how you can play a game comp competitively in 60 frames. Overall, I think Arena is really fun. It does have potential to be a really great esports game. I hope BSG do listen to community. They do those small tweaks about the maps. They change the sites, uh, balance the presets which they already have. So props to that. I'm glad you're balancing presets um, already. Uh, but maybe, maybe balancing of presets should be done in seasonal way, so when the season starts, you shouldn't balance presets midway unless it's something super OP. And all the balances should be done either at the beginning of the season, like before the season drops, or 
some like like basically in between the seasons you get it maybe i should also mention how loud and annoying uh the announcer and the music at the very end of the round is but i think everybody already mentioned it so there is no point uh but yeah this thing needs to be lowered and uh, maybe maybe even add a, an additional sound setting for the announcer and the music because i would personally completely turn it off so yeah, give this video a thumbs up and write a comment down below if you agree with my points um, and what else you would personally change about Arena. And thank you so much for watching the video. Check me out on Twitch. I stream daily. I'm grinding Arena. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.